Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to this, our first in the series of the CLA presentations. Before the main talk, it would be helpful if first we covered four points of introduction. And so, as our captain might say, let's stand by the engines and prepare to cast off. For the first point, let me introduce myself. My name is Vincent, Vincent Williams, and as you can see from my rather large business card, my background is maritime. Today time is limited, so we shall leave more about myself until our next presentation. Point two. We have one hour for each of these presentations. For the first 45 minutes, the ball will be in my court, and then we shall share the final 15 minutes for your input, your questions and your comments. If all those matters are not then covered, well, not to worry. We are all in the same ship for the next fortnight. Ship, not boat. And we shall discuss the distinction between ship and boat in our next talk. So whenever you see me about our ship during the coming days, please, please put your outstanding questions, comments or criticisms to me. They are my feedback and as such they are most welcome. Point three. The supporting slides. These consist of written bullet points and photographs. I use the photos to assist with my explanations, but I tend not to read directly from the bullet points. The bullet points are on the screen mainly for your clarification. When talking, I may use a word, especially a personal name or a place name, which is unfamiliar or in some way unusual. Hence, it may be helpful for you to read that word on the screen. And as additional backup, everyone here has handout copies of my slides. And lastly, to point four, prior to every presentation, I prefer to spend a few moments on a brief introduction. This usually consists of setting the scene giving the points to look out for in the presentation and the aim of that particular presentation. The aim of today's presentation is to explore as to why Horatio Nelson was so admired as a hero by the English. And with Nelson thus introduced, we can now get underway and on course with today's talk. For this presentation, it would be helpful if we spent a few moments on setting the scene. To appreciate how Nelson was perceived by the English, we need to view him through their eyes in their times. And their time was in the years around 1800. So with that thought in mind, let's now step back some 200 years to those days. The time we are now considering was one of calamitous change. Wars, revolutions, a real fear of invasion by Napoleon. England was expanding its empire. England was becoming the world's first industrialised and globalised nation. Everything was in a bewildering state of flux. By those days, the English were literate and they had a clear idea of the attributes expected of a hero. And their view of a hero was heavily influenced by the English comedic novel, which were very, very popular in Nelson's days. Novels such as those written by Jane Austen. Mr. Darcy, strong, silent, intelligent, courageous, stiff upper lip, knows how to win the girl's heart marries Lizzie Bennet, and together they live happily ever after in a better world. If today one were to ask the English as to who was their favourite hero, I wouldn't be surprised if many said James Bond. James Bond and Horatio Nelson are remarkably similar. Both were in the Royal Navy. Both were very successful in carrying out highly courageous assignments 
on behalf of their countries, both in a likeable sort of way, could be a little bit cheeky to their superiors. Both got the girl and both made the world a safer and a better place for the good people. The right side won. As for the girl in Nelson's life, you might anticipate that I have a certain Lady Emma Hamilton in mind, and perhaps I have. But as we shall soon see, Emma was not her real name. Emma was her working name. She was illiterate, she was brought up without a father, and she described herself as an actress. But the type of actress who danced naked on the table for the private pleasure of gentlemen. By the age of 15, she already had a baby, and it was this child who was named Emma, not the mother. And nevertheless, Lady Emma, as we shall continue to call our heroine, was determined to work her way to a better position in life. She truly had a genuine heart of gold, and she did love Nelson and he her. Today, if not rich, we are all reasonably well off. We have so many rights and freedoms that we're almost unaware of them. Things were very different in Nelson's days. A man, on leaving his house, say to buy a loaf of bread for his wife, could be taken off the streets without warning and impressed into the Navy. There were no goodbyes, no farewell kisses. Once in the Navy, it is unlikely that he would survive five years. But if he did beat the odds and returned home, it was likely that he would be diseased, broken or with limbs missing. As a wife, she had no property rights and that is why many women in those days chose not to marry. And if she were not a good wife, it was acceptable for her husband to beat her with a stick, provided it was not too thick. Most of the men on these large capital ships lived and slept in decks which were less in length than half the beam, the width, of our ship. Just imagine how cramped were those conditions, the smell. Those sailors were not entitled to any shore leave whatsoever. There was no fresh water for washing, nor reasonable ventilation. And as for sanitary facilities, they were worse than non-existent. The crews on some ships were totally wiped out by typhus, caused by infestations of body lice. In battle, those powerful ships lay alongside and blasted each other until all and one had either surrendered or had been killed. Those surviving, if not horribly maimed, were often left permanently deaf. Despite the carnage of battle, more sailors died of disease than due to war. To fully grasp the heroic status of Nelson, one needs to have an empathy with the nature of those days. As I say, one needs to be able to smell the dirt, the filth, the fear, the horror. And with that less than comfortable, but nevertheless relevant, image in our minds, we can now embark on the core of today's presentation, the life and times of Horatio Nelson.